Jovan Kurbalia, um, you've been tweeting from 1914. What, what, why are you doing that? What does that mean? Well, uh, I started the idea of tweeting from 1914 in order to give the a liveliness to somehow historical discussion on the origins of the First World War. And Twitter provides us with that element of uh, lively daily updates, minute by minute, hour by hour. Otherwise, we see the uh, First World War as some sort of abstract uh, uh, general discussion on the position of the main players, negotiation among diplomats, uh, strategic considerations, arms race. By tweeting, we are providing this drama and this tension that exists, especially in the last days before the start of the World War. These days, as a matter of fact, starting with 28th of June, when the uh, Austria declared war the, uh, uh, Serbia, till the last declaration of war uh, exchange between uh, Great Britain and Germany on the 4th of uh, August. You mentioned that the, the initial tension involved Serbia. And, and you're a diplomat who likes to joke that your country collapsed around you, the co Yugoslavia, whom you're representing. What does the memorial of that period mean to you? Yes, uh, first on this presence of the First World War in, uh, uh, in our daily life, even if you uh, check the, our language what we use on the daily basis, we uh, still jump into the trenches, we use no man's land. There is a whole terminology which uh, with origins in the First World War. The First World War is very much present uh, in the language, let alone in literature, philosophy, and, uh, and the way how we shape our reality. Well, I'm, as you indicated, I'm coming from the Balkans, from Serbia, and uh, somebody once said that the Balkans uh, export uh, more uh, uh, all extra history which it cannot uh, consume. And this is the true. The history is very, very present in the Balkans in the daily life and uh, and the First World War is a matter of uh, the daily discussion. It's not only in the Balkans, uh, since the when we discuss history, we usually discuss our present time and future. Our view about the history, about historical uh, developments, is shaped by our uh, policy priorities. In the Balkans, it is a very vivid and unfortunately still controversial discussion. Even after 100 years ago, the debate is open about the causes, about the... Uh, was it just the incident where the, uh, in Sarajevo where the strategic preparations and the uh, uh, powers were just looking for the pretext and excuse to start the war? Therefore, it is very, very lively. What is interesting for me is to see through this discussion of the origins of the First World War, the current uh, shaping on the cult uh, cultural and political milieu in the Balkans and in particular in Serbia. Mm. So then what do you say now about... Um those, I, some would argue, alarmist reports in, in international press, online and, and, and in print, that the situation we face now has got uncanny and rather unnerving parallels. We have large declining empires in, in Europe. We have enormous tensions around uh, contested borders. Ukraine is the most recent example. So do you have any, do you think there's any... Um, credence in, in these kind of parallels? Well, the, the history doesn't repeat uh, itself, but uh, as Mark Twain said once, it uh, rhymes uh, across the time. Now, uh, we have 100 years ago summer, very tense summer, with uh, quite the unsettling developments uh, in the Eastern Europe, uh, in the Middle East, all over the world. Uh, now, we have to be uh, aware of uh, some sort of underlying conditions that could uh, uh, move out of the control. And this is the reason why also I started tweeting and showing that um, quite relaxed um, atmosphere, especially in the years before the 1914, uh, the Belle Epoque flourishing of the arts, the feeling that we are living in, that our predecessors lived at that time in very unique time, that nothing bad can happen. And even if the war happens, it will be over till the Christmas and it will be some sort of a, a easy, easy business to be completed. There was a lot of optimism. I would say optimism which was shaped to the large extent by developments of technology, science, arts. Humanity was under, on adrenaline. And I would say this is a possible parallel. We sometimes uh, 
think that our time is unique, that we live, and it's, it's, uh, we live in a special time, and it's, it's natural, we live today, we, uh, we are the only one who occupy the planet. But this element of chrononarcism could be risky, and this is the reason why historical alerts, without being al alarmistic, are useful. And they can show that uh, rationality, that all this accumulation of wisdom, all this accumulation of knowledge, scientific discoveries, could easily turn by wrong turn on the Sarajevo street uh, into something, something horrible. This is the, the message which is, which is useful. I don't think that we are in as difficult, uh, as, as risky situation as the humanity was in 1914, but it is useful to be alert. And what I've been trying to tweet to alert is that we shouldn't rely too much on technology when it comes to very delicate negotiations about the core questions of the peace and war. Uh, 